I love summer. It's one of my favorite times when we can look forward to get-togethers with families who can be a great source of love and support, as well as frustration and sometimes even embarrassment. Regardless, these are all memorable moments, and here's a menu designed to get everyone around the table to enjoy some happy times. I cook what I crave and over the past few days I've been craving old-fashioned vegetarian food. Not just any veg curry, I'm talking about the wedding chow and if you're from Durban you'll know exactly what I mean. I'm preparing potato vellas, a veg biryani done the old-fashioned way with cabbage, carrots, gadra beans and double beans and for dessert a rich buttery soji that will definitely take you back in time. Starting out with the veg biryani, sunflower oil into the pot, next in goes the bay leaf cinnamon sticks and cumin seeds. They start to splatter once they hit the oil, give them a stir. Next ingredient, finely chopped onion. Add that to the hot oil. Two teaspoons of coarse salt. Fry the onions until they're golden brown. Now there's lots of ingredients here, but please don't be intimidated. This is a simple dish to make and it is really delicious. The onions are just about ready. Pour some boiled water into saffron. Just about a cup of water. Add some ginger and garlic paste to the hot oil. Stir that around, it does splatter a bit. This is so easy to make. Next, some red chili powder. Two tablespoons going in. My mom and gran seem to make a veg biryani in what seemed to be a flash. Heat the chili through. Carrots. Add the cabbage and stir well to coat. When making a veg biryani, it has to be done with fresh veggies and not the frozen type. The cabbage starts to wilt slightly. Then add some coriander, garam masala and cumin. A pinch of turmeric also. Stir that through. Add the remaining veggies. I've got a combination of steamed double beans, gadra beans and green beans here. Pop that in, peas, and potatoes. I've par fried these potatoes already. Mix that through, make a well in the center, and add the chopped tomato. Stir well to coat. Pour in some fresh cream. Some brown onion going on top to add flavor. Sprinkle some par cooked lentils over the veggies. And I've got par-cooked basmati rice here. Add that on top. Spread the rice over the veggies. I'm just using my fingertips to do this. Add the remaining lentils over. This can be baked off in the oven or you could steam it on a low heat. Brown onion goes in next. This is quite simple to make. It's thinly sliced onion fried in batches in hot oil and left to drain. Soft butter, a few blocks. It adds decadent flavor, richness, but it also prevents the rice grains from sticking. A few drops of yellow food coloring going on top to tint the rice grains. And lastly, that saffron infusion. Cover the pot with a tight fitting lid, reduce the heat and leave that to simmer. If you like, you can also bake this off in the oven. Let's start with the potato varas. Starting out with the filling for the potato varas, I've already boiled and mashed some potato here and I've let it cool down. Sunflower oil going into a pan, just a touch. You can use raw onion in the vara mix, but I prefer frying off the onion first. Mustard seeds going into the pan. Once they splatter, add the cumin seeds. And oh, here they go. Half a teaspoon of cumin seeds going in. Onions into the pan. Add fine salt. And remember to season well. I haven't salted the potatoes as yet. Stir that in and fry the onions until they're translucent. Onions are translucent. Add some garlic. Green chili. Sliced curry leaves. I don't normally slice curry leaves, but I don't want to find whole leaves in my snack. To this, add some turmeric and stir that into the onions. Color changes almost immediately. Pop the potato into the pan. You can use this filling for samosas or puff pastry as well. Use the back of a spoon to break down the lumps in the potato. I prefer using floury potatoes instead of waxy ones for this recipe. 
The waxy potatoes remain quite firm, they're not quite as soft, and they don't absorb the flavors the same. That's ready. Add some fresh chopped coriander to this. And if you are a methy or fenugreek fan, you could add a handful. And while this cools down, let's make the batter. For that, I've got some chickpea flour here. Make some red chili powder. So about a teaspoon salt, using fine salt and bicarb. Add some cold water to make a batter. Mix that together. The batter should be of a medium consistency. Let's move some of these bowls out the way. Let's get some oil heating up here. Next, a spoonful of potato into your hands and just mold that into a smooth ball. It's quite easy to work with when it's warm. Cold potato does tend to crack a bit. There we have it. Put that onto a plate. You could make these bite size if you like, or even make them into patties. Really simple to make, but absolutely delicious. I think that's about enough. A few last stirs. Let's check the oil. Pops up to the surface almost immediately. Take a ball and place it into the batter. Use a tablespoon and coat. Gently lift it up. And pop it into the hot oil. Use a clean tablespoon and gently move the potato virus around. Always wait for the batter to set before you try to loosen them off the base of the pan. The first ones come up to the surface. You could add some mushrooms to the potato, some peas as well, some methi, fresh mint, or even stuff them. You could serve this with a date and tamarind chutney, something quite tangy, or something quite spicy and hot, like a mint chutney. It's starting to turn golden brown. The batter's crisped up. I prefer them deep golden in color. Grab a strainer, hold that over the hot oil, and pop the varros in. Place them on a serving platter. I'm using my fingertips for this. Remember, these are really hot. I've got chef hands. So use tongs or a spoon to do this. Hot potato, hot batter. We're going to serve this with some mint chutney and some mango chutney as well. I'm going to get started on the fresh cream soji. For the rich buttery wedding soji, I've preheated the pan already. In goes cinnamon stick and semolina. I loved attending weddings when I was a kid, which was always quite bright and colorful. But I'm sure it also had something to do with the wedding soji. Semolina's changed color. You can always just touch it to feel if it's heated up, if you can't spot the color changing. It's browning quite nicely. Add some butter. I've got equal quantities of butter and semolina here. This is definitely not for the calorie sensitive person. Add cold water. Milk evaporated milk and fresh cream. It does look like quite a stodgy dessert. It is delicious though. To this, some ground cardamom. This is green cardamom pods that I've ground in a coffee grinder. To that, some yellow food coloring. The soji is really decadent. To give it a creamy texture, I add some condensed milk. Sweeten with sugar. And once the sugar starts to melt, it does get slightly runny. Keep stirring and work that until the butter separates from the semolina. The soji is dry. It's come away from the sides of the pan, starting to stick just slightly. This is now ready to be served. Let's plate up my vegetarian meal. To serve the soji, I've got some dessert cream here. Drizzle that over the warm soji. Next, a touch of gold leaf, just little bits. Try to stick this onto the cream, it's much easier. And some colored almonds. 
this is what makes it look really festive and I'm sure it does remind you of weddings. And this looks perfect just the way I remember it. Preparing these dishes has taken me back in time to my most memorable vegetarian moments. I've made potato varas, an old-fashioned veg biryani and a rich buttery fresh cream sorgi. This was called the wedding chow. It was served on paper plates and thoroughly enjoyed. I hope you enjoy these recipes as much as I've enjoyed preparing them for you.